Farm for Profit Podcast. Take a listen, have a blast. Farm for Profit Podcast. Learn about farming while having a laugh. Farm for Profit Podcast. All right, Dave, you and I get to do a podcast without Corey. How exciting is this? Going I'm, to be? I'm super excited <laughs> without Corey, yeah. Uh-huh. But we are sitting here at Commodity Classic 2024, and we're here in the last hours of the show we're in the afternoon of the last day but we are still sitting in the largest booth the commodity classic has ever seen more than one acre we've been told on carpet and some of the absolutely most recent releases from john deere so we get to talk a little bit about some of the technology that's here and what that means for the future of agriculture dave i know you're ready to geek out because you love technology i do i do and there is a whole lot here and i like progressive thought processes and that is why we're here at commodity classic how can we do it better quicker faster absolutely so we have two representatives from john deere hanging out with us today i'm going to let each one of them introduce themselves and we're going to kind of follow a path of natural conversation to learn more about what we've got so ladies first why don't you tell the listeners who you are and what your connection to deer is sure absolutely my name is emily preeb I'm the manager of production system marketing for US and Canada. So my role is the iron elements of our portfolio that you see here focused on the corn and soybean grower or the small grain grower in the large ag segment. So think of things like tillage, planting, seeding, large tractor business, combines, uh, sprayers, all of those would be my responsibility. That's a big responsibility. It's fun. Yeah, it's cool. Multi-country too. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yes. Get up to two uh, of them. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like that. Go right ahead. Hey, thanks for the opportunity. Matt Olson. I'm the manager of Precision Ag Go to Market. Emily and I work together. She's got the equipment. I've got the technology. I'm definitely really excited to be here talking about how all these pieces come together because, you know, technology is such a large part of the conversation that really gives us that advantage that our customers are looking for. That's the one-two punch. We like to refer to ourselves as Maverick and Goose. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. That's absolutely great. But I want to make a little bit of a a human element to these positions because John Deere is a large company and has been for a long time, extremely important to the ag industry. But it's made up of a lot of individuals that have a strong agricultural background. So why don't you, Emily, tell us a little bit about... What's little, your what's little, your tie? What's your tie to agriculture? For sure. So I grew up in central Wyoming, the state, not the town in Iowa, or Illinois. Oh, <laughs> it's yeah. important uh-huh. to say that. <laughs> and uh, my family has row crops as well as a cattle operation. So we have a farm and a ranch. The cows live about 60 miles away from the farm, and we grow a lot of groceries for them on the farm and then also do some row crop as well, things like pinto beans, that kind of thing. So... That's where I grew up. I went to school out there, and John Deere had similar values to what we did on our farm and ranch and was interested in how I could be a part of a large company making an impact in the industry. So it drew me to John Deere. You know she's a farm kid because she calls the feedstocks groceries. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. exactly how that goes. So when I think of Wyoming, I think cowboy all day long. Were you rodeo? Did you rodeo? Did you ride a horse? Well, I've ridden many horses okay, very good. um but i i didn't rodeo i have several friends uh yeah. that were actively involved in rodeo but we farming was our number one priority so i would call my dad a farmer with cows rather than a rancher so we have a lot of cattle he's a cattleman for sure but he would be a farmer first but we, we have, absolutely the cowboy way is a real thing the bucking horse all that that's that's we, very real. we had this debate out in Tulare, california at the john deere booth yeah. when, when are you a rancher when are you a farmer an orchard uh, sure because the guy out there he had uh, grapes he had no he, livestock and he's like they I'm called a ran- it a ranch he's a yeah. ranch yeah. and i'm like wait a minute you don't have any livestock so i grew up in montana so i'm thinking, oh there you go oh thinking, cheers I'm, we're neighbors i know i'm thinking <laughs> ranch all day long yeah yeah for sure yeah when i called on dealers in california it was the same i had to and then quickly i went to their vernacular of yeah it was a ranch which in my mind meant farm but yeah being from montana we have a lot of a lot of things likely in common (laughs) that's great so now what about you matt is there a tie to agriculture outside of your role absolutely i am you know i grew up in northwest iowa esterville is where i'm from corn soybean cattle hogs um i left went to drake university Um, Went back to the farm like so many others in my family had done, and I I got back to the farm, and I I loved farming, but I wasn't put on earth to be a farmer. 
And so I went and left the, the farm, joined a large bank in Des Moines. Culture wasn't, you know, exactly what I was looking for. As a farm kid, found my way through some relationships through 4-H and got into the John Deere financial side of the business. So that was my entry point into John Deere. So it's definitely exciting for me to work with folks like Emily and other folks across John Deere that have that shared background and passion for agriculture, working together in service of farmers. And so even though I'm not on the farm every day, um, I definitely feel like we are all very much connected and, and that's really such a rewarding experience. So that, Dave? And he goes Seriously. home all the time and gets to drive the combine oh, and the green car and everything else. I'm a little jealous. He can drive to his house. I that's can't. fair, right? <laughs> and you know, you and Dave have your connection, but I grew up in Cherokee County, so North oh. myself, and have a background in finance. So look at this. We'll have yeah. our own Peas little mini pods. connections. Yeah, we went from well. finance to podcasting. You went from <laughs> finance to <laughs> technology. Yes. How did you get into precision? You know, I was so I, I was started off at JDF, and we had this business in, in about two miles down the road, which was which we call the Intelligent Solutions Group, where technology was being born, and and I had a couple of friends that had left John Deere Financial, went over to the technology side, and I got a taste of of the exciting innovations that were taking place over there, and so I wanted to get closer to the equipment and the technology made the leap from the finance business into technology through business development. And then I was developing technology for about eight years after that. So it's just been a really rewarding experience. And, you know, Emily is my biggest promoter. Yeah. And, and one of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of is being kind of the, one of the longest standing technology people at, at John Deere from a precision ag perspective and, and have shaped where we're going to have had that history and that how that story continues to unfold. Cool. That's really good. So now let's talk what we're planning to do here is our spring technology update. What kind of new releases did Deer put out at Commodity Classic 24? So why don't we start here with the biggest one? Sure. I don't know. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. So the biggest one is probably that large, high horsepower, 9RX 830 would probably be what you're Absolutely. talking about. Uh, yeah, it is, it's it is large and in charge, Dave. It, I don't know if that's the biggest thing here. I think the biggest thing here is actually that it doesn't have def. <laughs> <laughs> I did have farmers cheer during the West right? session right? <laughs> when I said that it didn't have audible cheers. We don't get that often. I mean, we'll get smiles, but not full. Yeah. I yeah, mean, they were just thrilled about it. So yeah, it doesn't have def. And so we've introduced three new models, 710, 770, and 830. The design of that machine is a couple thing, couple different things. One, heavy tillage in the corn belt. So you guys are very familiar, mm -hmm. right, with discs and rippers and with the great soil that exists in yeah. all of those states um, in that heavy tillage application, that tractor can give folks the ability to do disc up to 100 more acres per day. You can go wider, you can go faster, you have plenty of ponies to do it with, so that's a game changer. And then also, depending on what ripper they're running, can eliminate about a thousand ripper passes a year. So in the corn oh. belt, that's what we're looking at. And then yeah. for small grains growers, it's a really big deal for them too, since a lot of folks will be listening and didn't get to see Commodity Classic, we mm -hmm. also have a full air seating train in the booth for the guys from Montana, the guys right? From the for West. the guys from Montana yep. and uh, the Northern Plains all over up there, as well as Western Canada, we have a train. So a uh, P600 air hoe drill connected to a C850 cart, which is also new. We can talk about that oh, in a minute. Yes. But that whole train itself, the tractor enables a ton for it. So when you think about hydraulic flow, 168 gallons per minute, which is great, gives you the ability to pull that cart um, with two times the load a mile an hour faster. And keep your feet on the ground where it's not pushing you. Exactly right. You get a lot Stuck of weight there. to what the it, ground. Like 87,000 pounds of iron over there. 83,000. 83? 83? Yeah. Okay, so we got lots of weight there. So that's the iron side of it. But, but hold on, I want to know because you've asked this question. That tractor hooked up to that air seater, hooked up to that air cart. How long is that from front to back? Some people say it's taller than the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> Some huge. people say the length is just as tall. Oh, sorry, go ahead. So I'm thinking we got all the iron side of the world, but we, we already talked how they're yin and yang, right? Or, or what would you say? Goose and Maverick. Goose and Maverick. <laughs> just wanted her to say it again. All right, so here's the deal. 
that tractor. Hey, we're making the interwebs, buddy. Yeah, this I is love becoming this real. Is awesome. that, that tractor is also set up for full autonomy, correct? Not quite yet. It will be. Because we, so when we were out in Tulare, we got to tour the Gus system, the global oh, yeah. unmanned spraying system, and uh, well, as we know, jobs are getting smaller, there are less people, not the workforce, and so we see a lot of. We can't just build a new tractor. Yeah. We have to build a new tractor with uh, what we're going to need in the future in mind, which is where you come in. And that's probably more autonomy uh, and, and more technology to make us go quicker, better, faster, you know, all, all around. So is, 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 there, is there good features on there that we're missing? What are we missing? You know, one of the things that, you know, is in that cab and comes with most really with all this equipment is, you know, the technology that are underpinning. So the G5 display, Starfire 7500 receiver with SFRTK, you know, modem technology that connects you to the operation center. You know, one of the things that's most important is you can buy these machines. But if you do not set yourself up for success with a proper plan prior to go into the field, you're really going to impact and reduce your opportunity for being most efficient and effective. And, and as you mentioned earlier, is how can we actually have the data that backs these investments up? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we're really proud about at John Deere is to be able to say, you know what? We're going to give you the data relative to how is your machine performing. If you upgraded your machine, you can go into the operations center, compare machine to machine, operator to operator, see how that investment is paying you a return to make sure that you're using it optimally and getting that return on investment that you paid for. And so we want to make it easy for the farmer to understand what they're getting from John Deere so they can be partners with us for the long term relative to they know that when they're making that investment that we're going to help them make sure that that return is realized. And we, you asked about autonomy. So it is yeah. autonomy ready. That's, I knew it so was what that means, it, yeah. it doesn't mean it's fully, when I said not quite yet, it doesn't have the cameras on it yet, but it has all the plumbing ready to go. So when the camera kit is available, which is coming very soon, um, then it will be the ability to, in essence, plug and play that camera kit with that tractor. So yeah. that's on the nine as well as some of our eights that are coming as well. We, we've talked that, I, I just don't know if society is ready, but uh, we are ready. We've talked about good. being ready. At I'm John glad you, those hats say right. you are too. That's yeah. good. <laughs> exactly right, but it, but I, it's coming. It's yeah. it's coming, and so we are thinking forward. We're 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 getting ahead of the game. I mean, my tractor. You guys hooked me last year at Doggone Commodity Classic, and I I geek out on tech. And so he's like, well, you need it if you had a GPS like this. And so I got a sixty one thirty R, and I was like, okay, well, I don't have the modem yet, and I don't have op center. So you're telling me I can check my oil just like I can on Ford Pass on that app. So now John Deere made it just as easy as that. I was like, doggone it. So I went home and spent twelve thousand dollars on <laughs> doggone. New glow, new monitor, new everything. And then I come to find out you guys got a new puck kit. Yeah. Precision Ag Essentials. Now. I hate to say you should have waited, but it's okay. You can get no, another one now, now for two thousand dollars. I know we can tell all of our <laughs> listeners now that you guys have a package you put together and it's almost subscription based, so you're always gonna get the newest, latest, greatest awesomeness. Yeah, it's cool. Olson, you should tell them about it. No, we're really excited about that and it's been really well well received. And you know, the big thing is is that we've kept the option to buy it once. Or for many customers that are sitting out there looking at that technology and saying, you know what, I want that, but I don't know if it really makes sense economically. So with what Emily just talked about is our Precision Ag Essentials Kit. It gives you a G5 Plus display, okay. Starfire 7000 receiver, and your choice of an M, and R, M or R modem. Mm -hmm. you, know, you pay $2,000 for the hardware and then $2,000 for the software per year. And you look at that investment, it's sixteen five. if you walk into the dealership. If you look at the amount you're going to pay me over a period of five years, that's 12000 bucks. And we'll probably have newer technology exactly in five years, right. six years. Yep. Then you roll into the new technology, you stay current. And I think we're really trying to make technology easily accessible. And so when we talk about what we're trying to do in our precision upgrades business is lower upfront cost. I think we just walked through a few numbers that substantiated that lower upfront cost, right? See, there you go. Banker. Always bring them along. <laughs> Better over time. You know, the software continues to be enhanced, and we have a proven track record of, of new value. One of the things we just brought last fall um, from a turn automation perspective was for combines. Yeah. And so new software, new value over time, 
and really just paying for only what your farm needs. And so we're really excited about looking at new ways, new business models that bring technology into the hands of more people and really giving them the choice. Because, you know, one of the challenges is, is sometimes farmers, when they hear of licenses or subscriptions, maybe isn't something that's maybe top of mind or something that they like the most. Yeah. And I think most of us can say that maybe subscriptions aren't something that we like, but when we look at it from a business perspective, you step back and say, look at what this ter technology can do for me. I'll make that investment and make that payment every year no questions asked. And you gotta, so you got to look at it differently than Netflix. And exactly oh, for sure. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly Rocket right. Rocket money exists to check to make sure you haven't unsubscribed from a subscription because you forgot about it. This is not that type of a subscription. This is based upon an ROI decision. Bingo. Yeah. Bingo. And we had an interview with a dairy farmer from Idaho that mm -hmm. stated he loves the connection ability with multiple machines running in the same field doing the same practices to be able to see what an operator yeah. is doing different Absolutely. from the other. To learn and say, okay, so why is yours this much more fuel efficient? Or why are you covering more acres per hour? What are you doing yep. that you can tell my other drivers? And it's it just isn't just factor. for the big guys, too. So he was a big guy with multiple operators that he was watching all of them. And I'm thinking, well, I'm, I'm a one-man band in Iowa. It's I don't need all that stuff. But then what I saw is, like, even it goes to uh, John Deere Mobile has an equipment app. Uh, I needed. I just bought yep. a new planner, a used new planner. Thank and you. Uh, so I, I bought a planner. I'm like, well, I didn't come with a book. Well, then my rep tells me, you know, it's on the app because you're already connected in the center. So I open it up. Sure enough, there's the book. I can get seating rates. I can get everything. So there, there is ad, there's value add for everybody. And I, when I think of the subscription, I think of it like Amazon Prime. You do this because you like order toilet paper and everything from yeah, Amazon McDonald's. Prime. And it comes every week, but it's free shipping. Man, it, you make it sound like I use a lot of toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, with that, it's just is the juice worth the squeeze? And yeah. in your case, by the time you ship everything that you would have shipped, yeah, it's worth it. On this side, I could have bought it or we can or we can lease it out. But you said something there that just a second ago that I'm going to just go right into the next topic. And that is you said turn automation, which I thought was just on the X9. But you guys have some new releases here on Combines yeah. too. Tell me more about that. Yeah, for sure. So um, when you and when you think about the lower upfront cost element, just to mention it, is that what we're doing is that if you were to take that same solution on, let's say a sprayer, we'll get to those or a combine, and you mm -hmm. put all that in on the upfront side, it takes a lot of growers out of the equation because uh, yeah. they're not interested, right? So what it does is creates a different entry point for a lot of people, and that's what we're trying to do. Yep. Um, on the combine side, we're really excited. We have S7 combines. So the S7 is the next generation of our rotor technology in an S-series sized package. So uh, the S-series is a very, very popular model all over the place, and the S7 replaces it. It has the, it's taken on the cab of the X9, which people really, really like. Okay. So new cab, as well as new options from a productivity perspective, which is probably what you guys were mostly looking at. Also has a new residue management system, so really drives more capability in that regard on the S. And then on the S7 and the X9, we have some automation features. So combine uh so harvest settings automation is one of them and then predictive ground speed automation is another there's a couple others but for the sake of the discussion basically what it gives you the ability to do is the the combine can understand the settings that it's doing and then with a forward-looking camera can understand the crop mat and then adjust settings on the go and the settings on our combines used to always be on the corner post yep. now they're in the display on nice. the armrest hmm. so what can happen so you were talking about your manual, checking oil, all the yep. things in Op Center. Now you can get all of that same information on your combine settings. So the dairy farmer that you had that was talking about that, same thing now is true with combine. I can understand how, is it conditions? Is it the operator isn't going fast enough? Is it the settings aren't right? Whatever. I can see all of that remotely. And then we also have turn automation, like you mentioned. So um, it's one of our favorite features, but auto track turn automation, basically what it does takes the combine or other products, wherever you want to go, turns at the end of the field, no hands required, comes back. It just, it reduces cognitive load on the operator. I think makes I it saw easier. in your like Apple-esque 
release that was pretty <laughs> awesome you. in the spacesuits, right? Twenty uh, percent more efficiency. Twenty percent more. Efficiency. Where yep, I think that's that was all from um, all the combine automation settings. So you take harvest settings automation and predictive ground speed automation. You can get twenty percent more efficient. So what we're asking customers to think about is trust the technology try the technology and you will see the automation benefits that you get. Because honestly, sometimes the biggest step is just trust in it, right? I, do I want to let the combine do it or do I, am I going to do it myself? It was the same was true with AutoTrack. When we started with AutoTrack, yeah. <laughs> customers were like, no, no, I'll drive it. And then that adopted over time. And there's a lot to that, right? A lot of farmers do things on their farms their way because yeah. they feel it's the best way. And it's the way that's going to work for mm -hmm. their operation. Same thing with the combine operator. But we've had conversations with producers about how that 20% is achieved. And if you think about even just setting your crews, mm -hmm. but if you have the ability to go faster because of the less crop density yep. or something along those lines, you're still at the same speed. And usually you set that level at where you have threshing capacity. And if it starts to get overloaded in some areas, you don't want to send it out the back of the machine. So if you can improve the efficiency of just your pass in the field, plus the turn automation, and then you link up the grain cart operator. Corey has testified to that on a lot of instances. If you Machine sync? Yes. Corey's yeah. tried it? Oh, yeah. He says they, he won't even, his cart operators won't even do it if it's not working. They prefer to not run the cart if for some reason. Oh, if machine not, sync's not working. Yep. Hey, there's a testimonial. That's so that was, that was a lot of fun. And, and then the fatigue factor. Yeah. Yep. Because we are farming more acres with less people. Absolutely. Which typically means longer hours. But how does the your department fall into the S-Series combine? What type of additional precision are we seeing? You already talked about, like, with G5 Advanced, where machine sync, turn automation, those that package of functionality fits in. You know, I think the other piece that I mentioned earlier before and is around work plans. And I mentioned that earlier, and one of the things we're trying to drive towards is a customer to have a full and complete data set of all the work that they do on their farm. So as we go back and try to say, what's working on my farm? What's not working? What can I do better? You got to have yourself set up for success. And as these machines go to the field, you can go in operations center, create a work plan that says, I'm going to go out with this combine, this header. I'm going to go harvest that field. You have your yield, I mean, your varieties loaded. So as you're going through the field, you're able to get that instantaneous understanding of how that field is performing. So as that machine is doing itself, its work on an automated basis, you have some mental capacity to now focus on what decisions should I be making for next year. And we all know that many farmers are making hybrid selection decisions while they're in the cab and getting themselves set up for success is a big part of how that technology comes together. And then as that yield comes off, you know, these systems are designed to help that farmer and their ag service provider, their um, nutrient or their agronomist, um, help understand what was taken off that field, not only in, 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 that, in that yield, but helping to understand now what am I going to apply for fertilizer on the backside. You have a demonstration here around the booth that shows that we have a script written for tillage yep. and for planting and for which we're going to get to next the see and spray technology and that is all displayed on the combine display as you're going through the field so you're seeing that oh this was lower population or this is where we switched hybrids or yep. whatever it was instantaneously if all of a sudden that yield monitor says 350 and you go wow this was a low pop area compared to my soils same thing with the agronomy the advisory team that we talk about all the time on the podcast mm -hmm. has accurate data Absolutely. It's no longer a guess yep. for us to be able to share there. So let's jump from the S-Series Combine and talk about what's new with C and Spray. Sure. Yeah. So C and Spray technology is changing the industry. It's really th makes people think about application. Very, very different. And in the booth this week, in fact, we can see it sitting right here. Uh, we have a Hagee sprayer. Made in Iowa. There you go. Uh -huh. And so is the Des Moines one. So that works out good. Yeah. Uh, but we, it has seed and spray technology on it. So on the STS-16 sprayer, so Heggy sprayer, high clearance, four-wheel steer, steer sprayer, 
It's a front mounted boom, hybrid boom. Some customers really like that. Some prefer the rear mounted boom. It's a matter of preference. Um, but it has, that STS-16 has the sea and spray system on it. So 36 cameras across the 120 foot boom. And that system is now factory installed from Hagee. You can also get it from uh, a jo on a John Deere sprayer as well. And it comes in a couple different configurations. You have the ultimate configuration, which is a two tank system in one sprayer. And that one has a carbon fiber truss style hybrid boom on it. Mm -hmm. So that that's a little different scenario where you have multiple tanks in that situation. And then we also have what's called sea and spray premium. That's what's on the Hagee. Um, and you can also get that now factory installed or field installed on a John Deere sprayer as well. So that takes that sea and spray system and puts those 36 cra cameras across a 120 foot steel boom. Um, and you can do that in the field too. And what's cool about the system on the sea and spray premium side, we're doing that for about $25,000 all in. So when we talk about lower upfront cost, that's a great example of a, an ability to get a technology at a lower cost entry point. And then there's a per acre element of the sea and spray system as well. So that's another opportunity for our producers to improve their ROI because yes. sea and spray, the technology, not only being awesome now, we can get it in two different formats, direct from factory or as an upgrade. But that's a huge reduction in chemical yes. costs. Yes. So on the Hagee, you can expect up to about 50% um, on, and that's for 15 or 30 inch rows. And you can do it in corn, soybeans, or cotton today. That's what the machine learning model, mm -hmm. that it recognizes those will grow to more crops. Um, and so that gives you an idea. And then on the John Deere, and about a 50% reduction in chemical savings. And then on the John Deere sprayer, it's about 66 on the ultimate. Um, we've seen growers see up to 80, but it kind of depends on what's your residual situation on your farm as well. Um, they also, the other cool thing about seed spray is there is a weed pressure map that comes off of the op center as well. So as a farmer's going through, they can understand here's how, what my reed pressure looks like here, how, here's how I might want to change what my chemical program looks like. Um, and so it's just, it's really, really changing the face of what growers can see. The other thing that I, one of my probably, maybe my favorite thing about sea and spray, I don't know, I love a lot, but <laughs> is the whole fleet gets smarter every time somebody uses it. So when you think about a machine learning algorithm, you have right. every image it looks at, it gets smarter and smarter. That's a plant. That's a weed. That's a plant. That's a weed. And it sprays those plants faster than you can blink your eyes. Or weeds. It doesn't spray right. the plants. I apologize. <laughs> that is well, not weeds, what it does. Weeds are plants Weeds too. are plants, but yeah. not the plants we want. Yeah. So it sprays the weeds. And what's interesting about that is then over the course of that summer, that spraying season, all those images that come in, they're anonymized, but they make the whole fleet smarter. So the next year with the software update and that kind of thing, it just gets better and better and better. It's like sending your sprayer to school every year. Well, it's I was really just cool. thinking that even when we talk technology side, I was going to geek out and on earlier, but our, our combine has information that we're gathering. Okay, Our planter has information that we're gathering. Uh, our tractors, how much fuel, how much whatever, You know, how long, when did we turn, uh, how long did we go, uh, what RPMs, and now our sprayers have technology. Okay. Um, Artificial intelligence buzzword that's out there all over, okay? Uh, but we're using it. We're, we're here at Commodity Classic. And if I say anybody's doing anything here, they are making decisions. It's all about making decisions. How do we do a better job at what we're doing, right? And so you guys are taking all this data. And for years, I've been saying it on the podcast. I'm going to make a t-shirt one of these days. Data is the currency of the internet and data is the currency of farming. You guys are collecting data basically in every aspect of the, the crop season to machine learn to be better so now we know when we plant that hey the, it, eventually you're going to have the perfect formula that says predictive analytics say you guys should probably plant this and spray it with this and harvest with this because it's going to give you the most roi at the end of the day is yep. that where we're going with the technology side or give me a give me a look 10 years down the road yeah i I want to emphasize, and if you didn't bring it back to me, I was going to bring this back to yeah. you. <laughs> but you made a, a really important point that I want to make sure that the listeners to this podcast are really going to take home and take to heart. One of the things you said was, like, was it data is like the currency of, of agriculture? Yes. Yeah. And if that is the case, and I 
100% believe it. John Deere believes it. And that's why we've continued to make such great investments in the operations center, the acknowledgement that we get in that value across the, the industry, the partnerships that we're gathering around the operations center. But when you take it back to a farmer's perspective and you look at how much of the accessible data a farmer is capturing, it's nowhere near where it should be. Yes. My goal is for a farmer to make sure that their physical farm and their digital farm reflect one another one-to-one. Oh, wow. And so if you look at your farm and its physical manifestation, its fields, your equipment, your operators, your inputs, is all of that in the operation center is all the field operations that you're doing with all of this great equipment documented in operation center. So I am with you 110%. It is the currency of agriculture that is going to pay a dividend into the future, yep. but we're not making that investment today. So as these technologies evolve, as artificial intelligence makes it easier to get insights, there's going to be a lot of folks out there that aren't properly positioned with that full data set to really take advantage of it. And it's going to not be an advantage. Well, you guys are both managers and I'm guessing you've had an employee that's like, man, I got to put that in. I got to fill that report out. I mean, I've worked for a lot of companies where it's like, really, do you really need all this to fill in? <laughs> like, what is the minimal viable can I put in to make it? But databases are only as good as the people, the information we put in them. Bingo. Yep. So you guys are trying to make it it's really helpful to, helpful to not have every corn variety say that's X. right that's right but, but <laughs> what, what, or one 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 <laughs> you guys see that so we're trying to make it simpler more user friendly yes. and now more cost effective with uh, uh making it a subscription base we know we want more data and we know our farmers probably aren't really good to the level that maybe you and i would geek out at right. to put that amount of data into our database but we also know that if we had more data oh man yeah. What cool stuff could we do with this data? So I think you guys are taking an awesome approach. We got new technology in tractors, new technology in combines, planters, sprayers, and now even, hey, let's make it easier, cheaper, and more friendly for you to use Yeah. Yep. as a package. Awesome. One thing I, I want to come back, and I, I think I've said it at least two times. I'm going to say it the, the third time. Work plans. So we know that when it's go time, it's go time, right? Yep. And you are not going to sit at the end of a headland putting in DK, whatever, Pioneer, whatever. You're going to put in 1, 2, 3, ABC, and, you're and you're going to go. The same number, yeah. X. X. Yeah. I've already got mine in there you're for the year go. already. You're yes. going to go. There you go. And the thing about work plans is, is that right now, you should be sitting down with your agronomist or your crop advisor or whoever it is that you're working with or even your John Deere dealer, because our, our John Deere dealers have technology support packages relative to how they can support you in getting that done. But the work plan is getting all that data set up. So when it's time to go to the field, you go to the field. You pull into the field with that tractor and that planter. It says, hey, are you in, you are in the home farm are, are you wanting to plant corn like yep. you you have planned to do? It'll recognize it. All you hit is go, and you go. This and it for for your labor as well, yeah. right? So rather than having to have a meeting at the beginning of the day that says Matt's going here and Emily's going here and you're getting lunch, it doesn't say who's getting lunch, but it, it does. Should. It pops up on the screen. That's a good right. idea. I'm lunch is hungry. important. <laughs> this is where you need to go, and then all the variety. How many? I mean, yep. it's it's really impressive, and that's all a part of the package work plan is an extra money so it not just exists all of now. our farmers have john deere equipment what yep. t tell me more i think you guys are making strides to uh in the technical world api advanced protocol integration i want to integrate with every other piece that's out there to make sure i still want you to talk because we still want the data is there any new technology in that realm that helps us uh, with the app or can i put other stuff in john deere op center a absolutely you can and, and, the, and the great thing is is that it wasn't technology that we developed last year or last month or two years ago. I mean, for a long time, probably five years or more, we instilled within the operations center the ability to bring in data from other brands of equipment and other precision ag technologies. So pretty much whatever technology is out there, you can bring in that into the operations center so you can use that as your single source of truth. John Deere Open Source. 
<laughs> uh, I don't know if we're quite there. I was going to say. I expected but that there, response. But there is a – but when we talked about Precision Ag Essentials, yep. that's the other cool thing about that kit. So let's say a, somebody comes from a farm like mine. We, not all of our products are the same color, yep. believe it or not. I wish that was not the case, but that's <laughs> the way it is. And so that kit – gives the ability to take that modem or receiver, put it in something different, and then integrate that data on the farm. So you still have one ecosystem, which is really important, um, but it can drive the ability to do that in a, in a less expensive way so that if you want one sort, instead of having a display here and a display there and they speak different languages and that kind of thing, that's the other thing that I think Precision Ag Essentials will really open for us. You could put that on your daughter's car. I, I could. We got <laughs> There's a lot of places you could put a motor. There's a yes. lot of places. We have at least six years until I have to worry about a car. Uh-huh. Though, so, but now we're collecting all the data. We've got a lot of machine learning. Who owns the data? Ooh. The customer. What? Yep. Yeah. You know, the thing that I would, I always send customers back to or anybody that's interested in this topic is deer.com slash trust. That's where our data policy is, and that's where we spell out in, in very plain English relative to the customer is in control of their data. Cool. It's the customer's data. They are in control. And I'm really proud of the industry-leading controls that we have that provide our customers the ability to share data. Because if you just keep your data in, in your account, Mm-hmm. and you don't share it with trusted advisors that are working with you to help you make more informed decisions, you're missing out on a tremendous opportunity. The great thing that we have is that you can share to each person individually and give them access to only what they need. So everybody gets what they need. They don't get what they don't need. Again, putting the customer in control. So Corey's It's all about partnerships. That's Corey's going to be... Saying harvest in my farm because I don't have a combine yet. So oh, nice. uh, I'm going to plant it, but Corey's going to be there. So I, I actually... you're working on getting one of the floor models. I, 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 well, we might have to get <laughs> one. For, seven. Yeah, Let's yeah. get one on order. Yeah, let's do right, it. Let's right? do for, it. It would take me, what, 10 minutes? Yes. So anyways, Corey, I made him. You talked about giving access. I was like, oh, hey, I can even invite people to this. And yes. oh, he's an operator for me. So even if I'm custom, which there's a ton of custom farming out there for everybody hey let's invite this guy invite that guy it's still but i gave him all permission levels too so now he's got access to my fields even though he didn't map it i did yes yep. it's all about partnerships and yep. the cus- and the customer gets to decide they're in control like that's what's really really important to us is that the foundation of any relationship is trust yep. and so we want customers to use the operation center and trust that when they do they choose what to do with their data so i don't know I, I do know why I had this feeling come over me, but when you were telling us, Matt, about who owns the data, the passion was there, and you were very clear when you were mentioning the trust. Mm-hmm. You know, I almost got emotional. It's even their website, forward slash trust. Right. But that's extremely important. To, it is. It's to, everything. To, it's a yeah. big deal. Because you have to gain that trust. I've listened to a lot of, of conversations around the service as a Solutions as a service. Solutions as a service. The model, like you said, through subscriptions. And you have taken a lot of flack. But there's been a lot of support as well. And it'll continue to grow. And everybody can have their own opinion. But it is beautiful to see that that trust is always going to be a focus. Because you know, you have to trust that we'll continue to improve. That we'll continue to be there for service. We'll continue to provide the same quality, if not better, than we always have in the past. But as we wrap up our conversation... I also want to talk about the technology that's sitting here in this planter right in front of us because that's going to Minnesota when it leaves Texas from the farm show. It is that specific one, actually. Yeah. Is it, that Millennial Farmers? That's Millennial Farmers Planter. I think that's we the one. We need to put a sticker on that. It's farm getting for a sticker. Right? I don't know. If you already knew this was happening. <laughs> it's going to get a Farm for Profit sticker. You can do it when it leaves. Yep. That's the plan. <laughs> we will be maybe one of the last ones here. That, that's probably one of those situations. It's probably to ask, better to ask for forgiveness uh, than permission. Matt. Uh, uh, <laughs> manager yes. talk. Uh. <laughs> but there's a lot of cool technology that is continuing to yeah. improve. We've talked about precision upgrade kits before on this podcast and did a scenario just on the planner itself. Last yeah. year, we got to see exact shot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's already improved. Yep. So tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so exact shot, it is here in the booth. So is Furrow Vision. Uh, so exact shot is all about, there's a lot of guys that use starter fertilizer. 
Today, when you put starter fertilizer in the furrow, you put it in in a stream. And so there's places that the fertilizer is going that may not necessarily be useful. What Exact Shot does is give you the ability to dose that seed with starter fertilizer and do it at 10 miles an hour if you're running an exact merge planter, right? In an electric drive planting situation. And what that does is reduces the amount of starter fertilizer you need by about 50%. Mm -hmm. And what, what we're seeing is, well, in Mod Year 25, it's going to be a factory installed option as well as a precision upgrade. And what we're seeing that folks are really excited about is the ability to dose the seed, but also what it opens their eyes to see that could happen in the future with specific placement of where that dosing could happen based on the farmer's operation. So today it's right on the seed. Um, and yeah, it's here. It's gotten a lot of interest for sure, but so it's a technology that works out about. We get smarter every day. We just talked about automation on this tractor and you said the cameras are coming. There's cameras everywhere. We have like five cameras looking at us right now. What is there an upgrade that you talked about with a camera? On a planner? So there's also, yeah, we do have cameras everywhere. This is a fact. <laughs> there right? are cameras from sea to shining sea, yeah. you might say. There from are cameras. sea to shining <laughs> crop, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so on the planter specifically, we're actually, this is in pilot right now. It's not out for full production, but it's called FurrowVision. And what furrow vision does is gives you a set of eyes in the furrow. So it has, uh, you can see it here on the floor, but or on dondre.com, you can go there and see it too if you want to look at it. But basically what it is, is it's a camera view into the furrow, and then there's a laser line across that view to show you what your depth is, but it also shows you what your seed trench looks hmm. like, what your placement looks like, that kind of thing. So it's a set of eyes in the furrow, and customers are excited about that as well. When you think about when I have to stop and dig and look, it just, it's a lot of time in a short plan window and if you're going you're planting 10 miles an hour you really want to get done quickly um and yeah. so when that's you plant the desire 10 miles an hour you also create a lot of dust you there's do no way that stays clean it actually stays clean pretty well so there's a whole system in there from a the way that it the way the camera is set up it actually stays pretty clean now if they're if you hopefully you're not planting in mud but if you had a situation like that you might have to sure. clean it off a little bit but today where it's mounted if that's the case actually you might not clean. want the data you might not want to know what the data yeah. is. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah then you're in a tough situation but yeah we're really pleased um with the with the with the uh, exact shot option it's a great fertilizer system that uh, we have a lot of interest in tanner you know how everybody gives out like the free check your seed depth uh tools oh those are going to go get, by the way maybe we get free cameras on my planner for seed depth that's right we don't even need the tools anymore <laughs> with grow vision yeah. oh man probably a, yeah sure <laughs> yeah. great idea it's a great, great idea. idea great idea uh, that's good all so, kinds of technology here what, what do we miss we, we uh, talked planters we talked harvest we've talked uh, tractors tillage big small seeds we didn't talk about air seeding i don't think very much we said we have a train mm -hmm. but we didn't talk about the air cart specifically so we have a new one here we have two actually in the booth and what we're excited about with that technology is we've just changed the way tech works on the cart in general so I don't know if you, growing up in Montana, ever did a bag calibration. I never did. Nope. Well, let me tell you, is it a great time? <laughs> so you have a bag, you're underneath the air cart, yep. you're putting about 25 pounds in the bag, you're trying to manage it, then you shimmy up the side of the cart, you dump it in to calibrate. It's quite the process. Yeah. So we all know that when it's quite the process, it doesn't happen, especially right. if folks want to go fast. Not yeah. as often as it should. No. Now we have a system called EasyCal. And what EasyCal does is there's a system right there on the side of the cart that you fill up a five-gallon bucket, it weighs it, looks at what your calibration settings need to be, and then there's a display right there on the side of the cart that's connected to the G5 in the cab. You put your MDV value in there, type it in, and it shoots it straight to the cab for you. So awesome. calibration is much easier. It's 75% faster than our current option and 45% faster than our than the competitors. So we're really happy with that solution. And what what's really exciting about it is it just gives more ability to be precise. When you calibrate, you're back to the data conversation, mm -hmm. your data is more accurate, what your seeding and fertilizer rate is, is improved. And then we also have Xacurate stainless steel meters. So think about those electric meters that yeah. are on the planner. Took those bad boys over, not the exact same one, but the technology is similar, and put them on the air cart. Put them on the air And cart. then we made them stainless steel because, as you know, fertilizer and some elements don't go together. Yeah. So stainless steel is very helpful, corrosion resistant. And based by doing that, we just made ourselves far more precise with the metering system um, and the way we can vary the rate and the number of feet that we can vary it. So we're like eight times more accurate than we were before. You know, it's the, a big old, deal. the old theory of an air seeder, 
back before technology has made its leaps and bounds is it was a controlled spill. Mm. This is far from that now. Yeah, no, this is not at all control. Yeah, and and when you look at the size of the tool, right? Oh, our largest it. tool is here, as well as our largest cart. When you yeah, and you guys asked me how big it was. Dave. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. A tool. Yeah. Exactly. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, so yeah. Sorry, I should have said seeding tool. That would have been more appropriate. But anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a significant investment. And again, short windows for seeding. If a storm is coming, and when you're doing broad acre, yeah. you know hundreds of thousands of acres potentially at a time, you need a great solution to do that. And those customers want the data just the same as someone um, that's in a corner bean situation. I think we need to rename the cab. So the cab used to just be the cab where you were in air conditioning and right now we have so much data coming into the cab. It's like the central processing unit. And this is just the information technology so room. Instead of cab, you want it to be the CPU, the CPU. That's what we're going to call it up in the CPU there where you don't really drive. You just get all the information. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we still have cab, which is three letters. So there it's good. Go. I mean, it's close <laughs> enough, I guess. It's close enough. Yeah. Uh, this has been an awesome week for us, but this conversation was a great way to kind of bring it all to a culmination. We've geeked out on the early release event that we got to attend. We have been talking to a lot of the representatives that you guys have had here in the booth, extremely good. knowledgeable. And it's been fun also to kind of eavesdrop on some of the conversations they've had with other producers. You know, we spent a lot of time here. And uh, a lot of it's been during an interview, but when we're not, we get to take a look at some of the latest technology that is available. Typically, I wrap these episodes up with a summary, but I kind of want to take it a little bit different route. We talked to everything John Deere today, and we understand that John Deere is not 100% of agriculture, and it's not 100% of what our listeners use. We would love for them to check out this technology, but I think also what John Deere has done with the leading people, the leading technology and is now leading the way in efficiency is going to be the whole cliche of a rising tide will raise all ships. Everybody's equipment's going to get more efficient, going to get more powerful, going to get to be a higher level of understanding because of the research, the development, and the hard work that the folks at John Deere do. Thank you. That's my assumption. But I think it'll be pretty close to that. I like it. We normally give a challenge too. So I'm going to give a challenge to our listeners. And that's... If you're not ready, get ready because it's coming. It's coming, and you're going to need to be in, fr- in front of it and to uh, support agriculture and, and move agriculture forward. You need to get on the bus, Gus. Yeah. Get ready. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. If our you. listeners want to learn more about what we got to see here at the show, where do they need to go? Yeah. So on JohnDare.com right now, on the homepage itself, you can see all the information about all the products that we have out here. Um, it's all, there's also several on social media channels. Facebook, Instagram is out there as well. I think probably the easiest way, though, is if you would go to johndeer.com and type in the specific product that you want. You could pull it up. There'll be a series of YouTube videos that drops every day this week as well as in the following weeks about each of these products in depth as well. If your listeners just want to watch versus read um, to see some of the cool things that we have out there. But I would say that's probably the best place. Um, the social channels are as well as johndeer.com is probably the best place to and go. And you also had, probably took the words right out of your mouth, 1,500 of your dealers. Yeah. Here. We did, yeah. It was awesome. That and of was, course, that was, that was the point I was just gonna I was just gonna make is that you know there's a lot of great ways to get this information and kind of self serve that. Yeah. But one of the great things that that our dealers do is to be able to sit down with each farmer as an individual, mm-hmm. understand about their unique needs, goals, challenges, and help consult with them. Hopefully, leveraging some of the data that they already have, and turning that into recommendations as to say. Maybe here's a new piece of equipment. Here's an upgrade to yep. a piece of equipment that you already have. Maybe here's a, a repair that we want to take advantage of. So many opportunities. Sit down. Leverage your John Deere dealer as a trusted advisor and Absolutely. have them help you on that journey for you to get ready. Yeah. And if you want to shop on JohnDeere.com before you go in, then you don't have to choose your own adventure. But yes. <laughs> well, now both. we got an Iowa you State want, slogan in there. You choose your own adventure. <laughs> of course. You guys missed the best place to find anything, John Deere. Farm for Profit podcast. If <laughs> you have here. questions, it'll be in the show notes. They are already and here. stay tuned for more cool information yes. from John Deere. Thanks again for you two for joining us today. Hopefully you get to kind of relax now for the last couple hours of the show. But uh, listeners, thanks again for listening to us. So until next time, have a good one.